Hey guys, we've got a story for you today, especially as it relates to EA and them looking to now be acquired, which is a huge shift from what they stated in February in which that they were trying to acquire more studios to embolden their offerings for games. So this is a big pivot, especially as they looked and had the deal fall through with NBC Universal. That's weird in and of itself, so we'll talk about that in this video. This link is coming from, or this story is coming from Kotaku. I'll have a link in the description for you guys so you can go check it out and read it for yourself. We're going to dive into the full post. I'm going to share my thoughts, especially as it relates to who might be available to acquire them and what offerings can we talk about because while you might think of them as FIFA, they don't have FIFA anymore. That license deal is going away. They spent a whole like 15, 20 years maybe on these licenses that are really locked down IPs and that's all going to be shifting and I know I'm going to be texted by my brother-in-law this fall asking hey where's where's the FIFA that I usually buy every year and so you know that gamers who aren't necessarily informed I think are going to be a little bit confused by what's happening in fall 2022 anyhow let's go and dive into the post and let's discuss let me know your thoughts and who do you think is going to buy EA uh, you know, and if it's going to happen anytime soon, who knows? Uh, there's a there's a history here that I hope to provide some context because outside of the the issues with Battlefield, outside of their issues with games like Anthem, uh, they still have and control some valuable IP. In fact, Mass Effect Legendary Edition sold well above expectations for the company itself. So they do have these really strong IPs, which I think will bring them value. But losing these licenses with Disney, Star Wars, and with FIFA. I think is going to hurt them in uh, at least the short term. They should and they have enough cash and capital itself that they can weather a long storm. But one of the things that I'm really happy to see is them losing these licenses, them locking down football pro football is a, like, honestly, it should be uh, absolutely outlawed because that's one of the things that is ultimately, I think, hurt gamers in the long run. When we look at EA, like, I don't think they've brought in value to customers. I don't think they brought value to gamers and having them being sold off, I think is actually probably a big win, but Wilson wants to stay in charge of this. And that could be a kind of a no go uh, deal for somebody like Microsoft, but maybe something like PlayStation as they look to kind of bring out their live service offerings and their goal to hit 10 live service games by 2025, things like Apex Legends being one of them. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and dive into the post and discuss. The video game market in, uh, is in consolidation like never before. Electronic Arts is scrambling like everyone else. Battlefield FIFA recently preserved a mu uh, merger with NBC Universal, but it held up uh, potential acquisition talks with Disney, Apple, and other companies, according to a new uh, report by Puck. While the deal isn't currently in the works, it does sound like EA does not plan to give up anytime soon. And when we see that they talk with Disney, Apple, and Amazon, uh, you know, I could see Disney, I could see Apple, and I could see Amazon being. Uh, uh, kind of interested in it, especially, and I know a lot of people uh, don't think New World's a success, but I think some of the reports are showing they've sold to like 25 million copies of New World. My re my original estimates were around 15 million. Um, so at its core, with what Amazon's doing, I I just question if they end up just saying, you know what, we want we want more, we want more of that. Um, so I wonder if that ends up kind of awakening kind of this you know beast that is uh, that company. Um, Disney in and of itself is interesting because they do have licenses like Marvel. They they own those properties. They wouldn't have to license them out. Um, but them pulling back from EA says that they haven't been happy with them overall. And Apple is always just kind of doing their own little thing. They do have the arcade. The question is, is would they want to invest in more uh, you know of that kind of technology in the long run? Anyway. So obviously we've seen that grow up um, and, and come out of it. We also seen Phil Spencer talk about how uh, Google and Amazon are kind of what he's more or less concerned by. And so him coming in just to step in to prevent a deal from Am something like Amazon might be interesting. But then you start to wonder with like Activision Blizzard, who like all of a sudden they start controlling even more of these IPs. Anyway, um, so several sources familiar with this uh, says EA has been persistent in pursuing the sale and only grown more emboldened by Microsoft Activision's deal. Others say the EA is primarily interested in a merger arrangement that would allow Wilson to remain as the chief executive of this new combined company. And so that's where you that's where I start to wonder if you start to see something like, uh, you know, Sony step in and, and say, hey, you know what? We're, we're, we want that. We want you to team up with, you know, 
uh you know bungie honestly i think when it comes to their sports franchises those legitimately should just be games as a service as opposed to selling the box each and every year but they sell it each and every year because it makes so much money it's just like kind of a yearly tax that they have on gamers that just generally don't follow the news and don't realize they're buying the same game every year they could just update their game um but they don't and that's that that sucks but you know what it's their choice. All right. Anyway, um, but apparently the deal with NBC Universal actually got the furthest along and it ended up falling apart because of price. Anyway, we don't come in on rumors is what uh, EA uh, told uh, Kotaku. And then moving on. Over the past year, uh, there has been a frenzy of video game studio acquisitions, one that was sent into overdrive in January after Grand Theft Auto publisher Take-Two announced that it was buying Zanga for $12.7 billion. Microsoft announced a plan to combine Call of Duty and Activision Blizzard with $69 billion. Noise. Uh, Sony followed uh, weeks later uh, with the deal to buy the studio behind Destiny 2 with $3.6 billion. Uh, that's also their new IP, but also to help them uh, retain the talent, to help them build out their live service model. Uh, despite what, you know, I always kind of, I have a, a love a hate relationship with destiny i love it and i hate it and i love it and i hate it it's such a freaking good game and at the same time like destiny and bungie sometimes you're like what are you doing to me um note that they still like when you look at anybody who's tried to step into that ring and kind of have that looter shooter light mmo space uh, i don't think anybody does better yet so who knows we'll have to wait and see there uh in an interview's call in february they talked about how they were wanting to buy other companies and they kind of spent over five billion in the last year buying up studios to increase its size but now it appears that they are aggressively pursuing the other way and scaling up uh, buyers reported that wilson approached disney as recently as march in pursuit of what sources described as a more meaningful relationship than licensing deals this news comes as ea lost or abandoned some of its biggest existing licensing deals where the recently revealed three new star wars games are currently in production including star wars jedi fallen order that remove uh rumored to release in early 2023 its exclusivity deal with disney for the star wars licenses is not going to be renewed when it expires in 2023 i don't like these exclusivity deals because it doesn't allow for competition competition benefits uh gamers because essentially like same, look at the football like you do, you would think that if there was somebody else also making a football game out there and they were really able to do a better job you think that the football games at ea would have to do a better job but they locked it down so they didn't have to do any real investment so i honestly don't care about ea uh in the long run of it I just like yeah just get them sold get them out of there Let's get some real competition uh, in, the, in the gaming space. Um, and that's just my take on it. That allowed uh, competitors like Quantum Dream and Ubisoft to announce their own two big Star Wars projects. EA's revealed last week that it ended up, uh, it's ending its similar 10-year exclusivity deal with FIFA at the beginning of 2023, and it will rebrand its Blockbuster uh, franchise to EA Sports FC. Whatever EA's future holds, the one big concern with the consolidation is how it will ultimately impact employees at these company. EA has even reported uh, another profitable year in Kotaku recently learned that they an estimated 200 customer service staff are being laid off and for the employees said that basically it's being outsourced to romania and india which makes sense when you ever see these licensing deals uh play out so now i'm going to kind of just take a look at one of their big live service games this is kind of where i start to lean into the sony acquisition imagine them uh owning a, a big battle royale and apex legends continues to grow especially in steam charts especially over its numbers currently right now five percent of all twitch at the time of this recording and then you can see how it does its updates and how that continues to grow each and every month uh and with a little bit of a dip but then coming back with even more growth overall and you can see how it's trending continual upwards as well and so when you start to think about that as a games as a service game this starts to always kind of make me wonder if sony would be somebody who'd be wanting to acquire that obviously we could always see microsoft they have obviously enough money that they can do this but uh you know can you go would we see them acquire that i think there's a lot of people when it starts to talk about like mass effect when you start talking about maybe like a rebrand for anthem uh you know a relaunch for that as a games as a service game that completely failed and then uh trying to bring that back basically with what they were showing off originally I think there's a lot of like turnover. I think there's a lot of struggle with uh, with EA right now. I don't think they have a lot of uh, you know powerful brands that I'm think I, they, I think they have a lot of IP that they're sitting on that they're not doing anything with. And so the question ends up being like, what's that going to be cost? What's that going to be worth it uh, in the long run? So anyway, I thought this was interesting. I'd love to get your thoughts on anything we talked about in today's video. Sound off below if you feel like I earned it. Hit that like button as it helps these news videos out. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Hopefully I'll see you next week in some videos and more. But until then, take care. Yeah.
It's time to chill out on the couch and read some comments. That's right. You know me when it comes to destiny. I'm off with a clam, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Ooh.